Okay, good morning. Great to see all of you with us today. Would you stand, please? Just uh, point out that uh, the Bible College Banquet is coming up, uh, Christmas Banquet. You can get tickets at the Bible College office or also online. It's coming up a week from Tuesday. That will be December 6th, and uh, it will be a great time. Faithful is He is the theme of that banquet. So everyone's invited. You don't have to be a college student to be a part of that evening. So uh, I think there's about 50 tickets left for that night. So week from Tuesday, December 6th. And of course, we'll be having a lot of Christmas things happening during the course of uh, this season. So you can uh, look on your bulletin and see uh, the different events that are happening here at church. And then also uh, some caroling episodes. Those of you who'd like to go door to door that way, it's a lot of fun to sing with people who can can sing, you know, door to door and watch the reaction. It's awesome. It surprises people when you come to their door and start singing at them. So, right? Okay, so that'll be a great time. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for your, uh, uh, this great weekend of thanks and joy. We just thank you for, for this time of the year when we think about your coming to earth. We just thank you for uh, this uh, place where we can rejoice with you and enjoy your presence and the presence of our brothers and sisters We just ask you, Lord, to really fill us with your spirit this morning and uh, let us rejoice and be glad in you. Thank you, Lord, uh, for the truth that transforms our hearts and minds. We just uh, rejoice with you this morning and our brothers, our sisters, our family, this family of God. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen.
can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Almighty? Sing it over the battle. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? There is no one who can stop the Lord Almighty. Right. 
taken us out of the miry pit, God, to your side. Thank you, God. Oh, what a Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise him. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we bless you, God. Thank you. Yes, God. Let's bless our service in Jesus' name. Amen. Good to see you. It's time for the offering now. Did everyone have a good Thanksgiving? Amen. What, a, what an amazing worship service we just have. Weren't those words incredible? Um, where your love ran red, my sin washed white. Isn't that amazing? Those cleansing words. Just a, just a thought for the offering this morning. I was speaking with a colleague from... Um, Morocco this week, and he was telling me about his dad who's hard of hearing, and um, he tries to talk with his father over the phone, and usually his father doesn't really get what he's saying, but he said somehow whenever I say the word money, he perks up and he, he always seems to get that word, and he'll say, money, money, yes, send money, we need money. I thought that was so funny, like his dad's got selective hearing when it comes to money, and um, Sometimes we can be the same when something that's very, very dear to us is like the finger of God kind of presses upon us. We might have a certain reaction. We might um, get excited or we might get a little depressed. Uh, the offering is an amazing test of where our heart is. And the Bible says in Matthew 6, where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Let's, um, in the spirit of thanksgiving, 
Let's just go to God in prayer. Let him search our heart that what is important would really be at the forefront of our minds and our hearts and that our giving, our tithing would really glorify him. Lord, we come before you with our offerings this morning. Lord, we know that an offering is so much bigger than putting money into a basket or just the consideration of putting money into a basket. But we know that life is so much greater than what we can see. And once again, this is a test you've put before us of what is really dear to us and what is really important to us. Father, may this offering, this money be used for your glory. May our decision making be used to cause us to have an expanded, stretched capacity for you. You're our God. We pray that um, you would be our treasure, Lord, and it would be revealed in our giving. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Good morning. Okay, just a few words for the introduction, and we pray first. Lord, we ask you to bless the service this morning. We thank you because <clears throat> we can trust you and lean on you for a fresh word today. And uh, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the opportunity we have to live our life together with you. And we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Um, <clears throat> we'll turn to First Corinthians 8, uh, 2 in a moment. But uh, I don't know if you do that sometimes. I do it uh, sometimes in a positive way and sometimes in a negative way. But I wonder, <clears throat> sometimes I ask myself, to prepare myself, and sometimes I wonder, why am I going to church? You know, it's, I don't know if it happens to you, but sometimes we, you know, I, if it's a positive way, I'm thinking, okay, I need to be prepared. So I'm wondering, okay, this morning I'm going to church, but why am I going to church? Why do I, why am I, what am I expecting from God? But some other times we might ask the question, you know, really, I mean, I've been in this church for 30 years. We could be familiar and say, okay, why, why, why am I going to church? And last Sunday was very interesting because last Sunday night, <clears throat> the message was on faith. And it's funny because faith is like grace. It's one of those words that I think we hear about those topics, I think about every services. You know, we use the word faith and we use the word grace. So in the same time, these are the words, are the concepts that we hear the most, but these are also the things that we understand the least. Uh, <clears throat> and that's why I want to turn to 1 Corinthians 8 too. As just a reminder for us to come, you know, when we come to church, and remind us for me, uh, <clears throat> just to realize that uh, God has a plan when we come to his service. It's not, you know, I think last time I... I said something about the topic. I said, this is not just another service. It's, it's just a new service. I'm not, you know, as a, as a Christian, we make commitments. And our commitment is not to come to every services, but to come to each services, which is a different mindset. Like today is a different service. Today is a, is a day where God wants to meet us. And in 1 Corinthians 8, 2, Paul is saying, to the Corinthians, but he's also speaking to us in a simple way by saying, uh, if a man thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet how he ought to know. And <clears throat> in this verse, it's very interesting because Paul is not saying that we don't know anything. He's not saying you should know things that you don't. He says even when you know something, you never reach the point when you know anything how you ought to know anything. And I could have, you know, I can listen to grace and faith, as we heard last Sunday, and think, okay, I know all about faith. You know, I've heard it so many times, I've read it in the scriptures, but really I don't. And you think about the rich young ruler in Matthew 29. It's very interesting because um, he says, he comes to Jesus and, and call him, you know, good master, and then he asks him, you know, what should I do? to inherit eternal life. And um, <clears throat> at the end of the story, you realize that he actually figured a lot of things out. Like, he's got it, in a sense, you know, of course. So Jesus quotes the, the commandments for him. He says, yeah, yeah, well, I've done that since I was a young man, you know. <clears throat> so he's fooling himself, but at the same time, he really thinks he knows. And it's the same for me, you know, I, I, I can come and say, okay, yeah, I've, I've read that verse many times. I heard preach about that verse many times. I understand what faith is. I have a definition in Hebrews 11. One, I know what you're talking about. You know, grace, of course, grace. This is greater grace will our reach. What are you talking about? And then God is telling me, no, no, you don't. You know, you know things. You might even know a lot of things, but you never know how you ought to know. So today is a fresh opportunity for us to just say, okay, God has something for me. And also when we know a lot, uh, it's, it's funny, I don't know. If you see the same thing, but the, the amount of things I know about God and the amount of things that I really obey and practice in my life, the gap between the two is, is just, it's just huge. How many things we know about God that we just really don't believe in a sense. So there's no many things, so many things that God wants to do in our lives in a fresh way. You know, today is not just another service, just this one service for today. And God has something for me, you know, it's just... I don't know how I ought to know. And when I come to peace with the idea, then I'm learning. 
then I'm hearing, I'm listening, and then I can let God do what he has to do for, for me to do um, in, in my heart. So <clears throat> just think about this, you know. It's, it's when you think, we could take that verse uh, in one way, which is, you know, well, you know, like we're pushed by Paul by saying, well, of course I know some things. But no, no, actually it's a good thing. I realize, yes, I do not know how I ought to know. So today there is something for me. I don't have to go and just cross my arms and say, okay, well, what time is it? Okay, it should be done in be 45 minutes, and then I can do this. No, there is something for me. There is something for me because I do not know I ought, I ought to know. Lord, we ask you to just bless this time together, bless your word, and, and help us understand what you have for us and prepare our hearts for the message. We thank you because you have something for us. And even though we know, we don't know how we ought to know, and that's, that is a good thing. And here we can hear fresh thoughts from your throne. And we thank you for this and pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. Beautiful word. Good word, really. Great word. Uh, the, his uh, introduction um, reminds me of a diagram that we drew in Bible psychology, and um, I'll do that for you uh, using a verse, and then we'll go to our message. It relates to our message. Uh, and so the verse uh, I'd like you to turn to <clears throat> is, uh, I'm going to have to, uh, let's see, ah, okay, the diagram, and the verse, I, I want you to find, I think it is, let's turn to Luke 12, yeah, we got it, okay, Luke 12, uh, because I want you to uh, hear what he just said, and kind of work it in your heart and in your mouth. He said, um, that's possible for me to know a lot of things, but does it really edify me? That's a great point. He didn't say exactly those words, but I am. I want you to think about it. I might know a lot of things, but are they spiritual? Or I might have a lot of knowledge, but do I have wisdom? Uh, he said, I might, may go to the church, but do I, do I get what God has for me in the church? Didn't he? He said that. He said that. All right, I want you to look at this uh, verse, Luke 12 and verse um, 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together, an innumerable multitude of people. You want to read it with me? Go ahead, because it will help you. Ready? Verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together, an innumerable multitude, multitude of people, insomuch they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, First of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. In the Gospel of Mark, he said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the diagram uh, goes like this. Um, uh, I think I got it. Like, you know, we do this cliff diagram. Like a narrow cliff like this. And one side... And you get to the other side, it's very broad over here. There's a broad plateau, and we'll call this Jesus Christ. To find him, to know him, is like our journey on a narrow way. You can fall off on this side and be a Pharisee. And you could fall off on this side and be as sad, you see. What are they teaching? Pharisees were legalists. 
like we could say by general terms, military, uh, right, wrong, uh, order, law, uh, system, program, military. The Sadducees were more, uh, they didn't believe in angels. Um, they were free thinkers. They were not literalists in the Bible. They were more, you could say, liberal. The Sadducees were liberal. The Pharisees were more legalistic. And Christ said, beware of the leaven. Now, leaven is, um, you know, the, the small plant uh, ye yeast that you put in the flour. And as that is warm and wet a little bit, that that plant produces gas and the flour rises uh, in the dough. And he is saying that this happens unseen, undetected, gradually in time for the believer, because he said it to the disciples. He said the disciple, to the disciples, you will be, un, it'll be unseen, but it'll happen in your heart that you'll become a legalist as a Pharisee or a free-thinking liberal uh, in, the, in regards to the Christian faith. And this is really, there are parties that you can define in church history this way. A uh, liberal free thinker doesn't believe the Bible is inspired, uh, believes all kinds of ideas about religion. But it starts in the heart, and this is the interesting thing. When he said it, there were a lot of people pressing in on him. There was a multitude of people around him. We read it, innumerable multitude of people, and they, so much they were trampling each other. And he, he said to the disciples, beware. Now, why did he say it? Uh, because it poisons our faith. It poisons our influence. It takes away from us our true ministry. It affects our spiritual life. It, it affects our influence in our message, what we say, what we think. It affects the very life that we have. It's a poisoning effect in the, in the church. Uh, so you see in church history we go, uh, a legalist is so strict and so hard that uh, you feel, you know, I'm going to go to hell uh, just because I can't even, I can't do the performance. And Christ said this is hypocrisy. Because in their legalistic heart, they're not doing what they are saying. And then on the other hand, the uh, Sadducees, and by the way, Caiaphas, the high priest that ordered the crucifixion of Christ, he was a Sadducee. And the, look at this, the two groups, the two wings come together in the Sanhedrin to order the crucifixion of Christ. So there's a possibility for this carnality form to bind up with this carnality form to crucify Christ. Wow. So what is the way? How do we find the way? Well, I, I want, want to speak about that this morning uh, in a word. Well, we'll look at it in a second, but in a word. This way is really Christ is the way. His person. Nothing less than him. The very life of Christ. The reality of Christ. And uh, he fills us. First, we are born again. Being born again. Not of the flesh of men, but born of the spirit. Born of by the grace of God in John chapter 1 and verse 12, by believing, being born again, not of corruptible seed, uh, you know, the material seeds of, of things, of spiders and plants and, and, um, and ferns and 
uh, all kinds of seeds that are in the world, the ragweed, the pollen, uh, the seeds of men and women, uh, the sperm, the egg cell, all these are uh, corruptible or they are material. They don't last forever. But being born again of incorruptible seed of the word of God, and that through the new birth, then we are now in his image with a new heart, and we have something fundamentally different. Now notice, we'll, we'll uh, go to another uh, short thing here I want, to, want you to see. Um, let's see if we can do this. Let's find this one. This one will work. Mm, this one. Okay. Oops. I don't know now. I don't know. Pastor Steve. Let's see. I made a mistake, I think. I don't know if I can get. Nope. But, but help me, okay. It's the white one, okay. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, all right. Now turn to Genesis 2, we'll, we got it ready to go. Oh yeah, you got you to uh, talk to each other for a second, so would you stand up with me for a moment and just say, what did Pastor Philippe Siraji preach in the introduction? Do the best you can, tell your neighbor. What did he say? All right, uh, while you're standing, turn to Genesis 3. <clears throat> and just this one verse, just to, the core emotion, Larry Crabb said, the governing emotional energy in the unregenerate human personality is fear. Chapter 3, verse 10, he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Okay, you may be seated. <clears throat> when Adam and Eve were in the garden, and they sinned, the first thing they've experienced was in their the alienation from god and core in their core was fear it ha happens to me every once in a while i have some undefined fear that just occurs in my heart it's maybe how people live they live with this uh fear we could say that the core in a person and then we have the exterior emotion that we use maybe we have happiness we are happy people or we are positive in our attitude in our speech maybe we are kind we are gentle we are uh, pleasant people but behind the exterior is the core and in the core for a fallen man 
unregenerate man and for the Christian, naturally, he lapses to, that means uh, in his carnality, he operates in fear. Uh, we see this in many times happening with people. I have a list here of a hundred, the top hundred fears that people have. I, I won't bore you. I mean, you can just think about any, the fear of dogs, fear of thunder, of small places, fear of germs, fear of flying, fear of death, fear of public speaking, fear of being alone, fear of failure, fear of birds, fear of chickens, fear of crowds, fear of, fear of chickens, fear of intimacy, fear of intimacy, fear of needles, fear of people, fear of water, fear of abandonment, fear of blood, fear of commitment, fear of the unknown, fear of driving, fear of falling, fear of success, fear of God, fear of cats, fear of change, fear of balloons, fear of darkness, fear of men, fear of fear, fear of love, fear of the number 13. <laughs> Fear of vomiting, fear of bridges, fear of bugs, insects, fear of butterflies, fear of everything, that's a good one. The fear of feet, the fear of Friday the 13th, the fear of sleep, the fear of women, the fear of bees, the fear of buttons, the fear of ducks, the fear of fire, the fear of frogs, the fear of sharks, the fear of being forgotten, the fear of cockroaches, the fear of doctors, the fear of dolls, fear of fish, fear of moths, fear of animals, fear of bananas, fear of hospitals, <laughs> fear of bananas, fear of cotton balls, fear of crime, fear of food, <laughs> fear of ghosts, fear of horses, and so on. You know, you can Google it and you can find that list, I'm sure. Okay. Um, some of that we think is maybe ridiculous, maybe for you, but you have some, somewhere. We all have it. It's a result of our sin. You know, I was thinking, before Adam and Eve sinned, did they even know the emotion fear? Like imagine living in paradise with no fear. Usually in relationships with people in the normal world, everybody has the core, the core emotion of fear. And usually we touch each other on the externals. You are nice to me, I am nice to you. And we are operating in those terms. But because, this is important, because of your new birth, because you have the nature of Christ born in you, like on that narrow way, not falling off on that side or falling off on that side, but that the actual literal person of God has come into our hearts. And he said, beware of the leaven that works in you, that leads you off. And I think this is what Pastor Philippe was saying in his uh, good, good and spirit-filled words. And it is, we come to church because we are actually seeking God. We actually are what, following God with something in our heart where we're saying, I don't have it all settled. I mean, my salvation is settled. I belong to him, and he has made it possible for me to be his child, miraculously, by the re gift of regeneration, by the new birth. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Not he is becoming, but he is. He has the very nature of Christ. These are great and precious promises that by these we are actually partakers of his divine nature in 2 Peter 1, 4, having his mind. And in him, and we can draw the, the diagram simply this way, 
the core has changed to love. This is the new birth, the nature of God in us, the peace of God, the quietness. Yes, do we fear, of course, these things happen. We get startled, afraid, amazed, upset, distraught. But actually, some of it could be just also on the exterior, sorry, on the exterior. The flight, flight or fight adrenaline that we're designed to have to run away or to fight. These instincts are part of our body and our nature. Uh, but that doesn't mean that even though I have a flight or fight instinct, I also have something more. I have a float capability. Fight, fight, flight or float. Noah's ark floated. The believer is able to abide in him. The spirit is able to fill us so that love casts out fear. That love is able to build us up. And here's, a, here's an amazing principle. And we'll go to the scripture in a second. When another believer has love in his core, and the, the core of the believers are in fellowship like this. This is called maximum edification. When you and another believer are rooted in love and you're simply together and knowing and caring for each other, not artificially. You know, I used to live in Europe and a, and a greeting in American English was, hey, hi, how are you? And then, you, you know, you walk away. Hey, hey, how you doing? And you just walk away. And the Europeans, like, without English being there or knowing our culture so well, be there. Like, I wanted to explain to him how I was doing. <laughs> he asked me how I was doing. And, and he walked away from me. And I, I wanted to spend an hour to explain to him how I'm doing. <laughs> okay. But they have a good point, because sometimes we are on the surface, and people are looking for that connection. And this is why Christ came. Christ came so that people would be connected, not on the basis of their personalities or their culture, but they'd be connected on the basis of him, that his person that we would be both spirit-filled, or a thousand of us spirit-filled, or the core emotion is not fear, but the core, the basis of our new birth is the person of Christ. I want to see, show you two simple examples. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30, please. <clears throat> and David had trouble, maybe you know the story, hate to run through it quickly, but uh, verse 3, David and his men came, came to the city, behold it was burned with fire, their wives, their sons, and their daughters were taken captives, terrible. If you could, you, you and I get into that situation, it's a nightmare. It's terrible to lose your, the, your wife, your sons and daughters, and the city is burned with fire. This is where David was camping out with his men. He had a great group of men, and they were totally in distress, absolutely devastated. The core emotion in us is fear. The fear of losing my family absolutely not, ab, uh, actually now happening. So, verse 5. I'm sorry, 4. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. How long did they weep? before you lose power to weep. An hour, two hours of weeping, three hours, and they had no more. They were exhausted from the weeping. 
And David's two wives, verse 5, were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. They stopped there for a second. The nightmare that you feared, the thing that you know you could never handle it, I have those thoughts in my mind like maybe you do even though I don't dwell on them. I hope that would never happen to me. I, the nightmare that you, the core of me, the fear that I have built in me and then the external things are devastating. If you have, uh, you know what I'm saying, if on the outside here, the external is trouble, and if the inside is this fear, then what could I do? David was distressed. This is where you may end up someday, and I also. I don't want it, but I'm just sharing with you something I hope will help you understand and also edify you. David was greatly distressed. Who is David? The sweet psalmist of Israel. The man whose heart is after God. Who is David? The one that can remember what happened with Goliath, the lion and the bear. The man that knows God, that knows the word of God. Who is David? He's the one that has a resource, a relationship, and he's greatly distressed. Because the people on the outside here, he has many mighty men, they are thinking of stoning him. Look at verse 6. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. That is, the, that is the equation for discouragement. That is the equation for a total disaster. That is for running away from the people, running away from everything, running away. That is a recipe for, I'm so, sorry to say, something as tragic as suicide. That is a recipe for what is on the inside, meeting what is on other people's insides, and they were thinking of killing me. And uh, uh, if you just uh, day, a day a day before, hours earlier, I was the their their awesome leader, and now they're talking about stoning me. Okay, point made. But look at verse six. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. But how did he do it? How can that happen? What, how does that work? But David, of course, we could say that to every one of us here today. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And you could say, yeah, <laughs> it sounds great. I wish I, know how, I knew how to do it. I wish I understood that. You know, tell me about it. And that's what we're doing today. We're telling you about it. We're saying, yes, there is something that is more than you and I that dwells in us. There is the Spirit of God who is called the Comforter. There is Christ who is the Teacher. There is the way on that, that pathway on the cliffside, on the, the way that is, he, he is the way. And it, this brings us to our, our second illustration of it. It's in John chapter 11. Turn there, please. John 11. Verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there 
to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Lazarus is dead. There it is. The thing I feared. My brother is dead. And Jesus said, I am glad for your sakes, he says to the disciples, that I was not there. Guys, I'm going to show you something about me. Whenever we can find him, whenever we, we realize who he is, it edifies us. Whenever we find the nature of God, whenever we get to hear that clear edification that comes from the nature of God himself, because remember, Adam and Eve in paradise had no fear. They had no fear. And in God, there is not any fear. Love casts out fear. The core emotion for the believer is not fear. It is love. And when, they, when David was totally distressed, he, he knew there was something in him. We could say it that way, to follow it with me. He knew there, that there, there is God. And that these things come and they go. And the, the trouble passes away. And there is such a thing as, uh, as, you know, fearing and getting troubled and distressed that this is real life for us as people. But there's something else that we have. And that is him. And re read it with me. Verse 16. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him, speaking of Jesus, going to Jerusalem. <clears throat> and Thomas knew it. He, he believed it would result in, in Christ dying, and, and they would go with him and die with him because of the, the period in their history of his earthly ministry. At the end, verse 17, and when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. Many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Maybe she was just stunned, traumatized by the loss of her brother, couldn't leave the house with Martha, but just sat there. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died, but I know that even now, whatever you will ask of God, God will give it you. Jesus said, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, which would come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way, called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master has come and calls for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly, came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her. When they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily, went out, followed her, saying, She goes unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. And, and that's where we live. I mean, that's true. That's where we live, of course. That's true. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Well, 
think about it. I need encouragement. That's what we are speaking about today. I need edification. Not with any fear, but with love in the core by the Spirit. Uh, sometimes it takes you to sit with me and weep with me as I have my fear, my trouble, and my distress. If I can sense that you care for me, that you're sitting there quietly and that you care for me, if I feel that you care for me, I can open up to you. You know, some of these uh, secular methodologies of uh, group therapies and work where people make confessions, I don't recommend it unless you are confessing to somebody that cares for you. And why confess something to somebody if they don't care? And this is the beautiful thing about you and I in our new birth that it is Christ that dwells in us that cares for each other. Maybe on the outside it isn't always obvious, but, but the, this is a beautiful thing about the mystery of Christ. When Christ lives in a person, if any man love God, the same is known of him. First John 4, love in the heart is shed abroad. And that we could sit in a room with another brother or sister and, um, and love them. And maybe they open up, and as they open up, it may be helpful for them. And as you hear them and understand them and care for them, you can also uh, speak to them. Words of life, words out of the heart, words that are in Proverbs chapter 11, a tree of life, words that care. You see, when David had all his buddies against him, he had nobody that could sit with him and be a close friend and understand his trouble. And he had nobody to open up to and share with and interact with in a fellowship of love. But he was able to, by himself, be encouraged in the Lord. And go to him, like we could say, we go before God alone. And we are naked and open before God. And the Spirit of God is building us up in love. And the love is casting out the fear. And David got the idea in his fellowship with God. He said, guys, listen, we're not done. We're going to go get it. We're going to go get our sons and our daughters. We're going to go out there. We're going to find them. And we're going to, we're going to get everything back. Uh, this uh, love, this uh, faith he had, was greater than the discouragement that was in the camp. Greater than the de de dead and dying words, the difficulty of the moment. And he was able to say, let's go. He, and he led them and encouraged them. And it says in verse 19 that they recovered all. He got it all back. It's a story written for us. It's a story written for the most discouraged person on the earth. It's a story written for the believer. It's a story written for how much we need. Yeah, we need somebody like David to be around. Like, who are your friends? That's a good question. How do you get edified? Or is your, is your life more like on inside there is the fear and you're more like a happy, pleasant, happy-go-lucky kind of guy on the outside and you're with, a lot, with other people that are like that too. But when, they, um, when the real life happens, I need a deeper kind of a life that will uphold me, a spirit that will edify me and words of life that will speak to me. And when Jesus was at Lazarus' tomb, like he could sense the, the sisters, Martha and Mary, and the deep discouragement and the fear that they had that was in their hearts. And he understood it, and he cared for them, and he groaned, and he said, where is he? 
And here comes the most, most edifying thing a person could ever experience. The living Christ, the resurrection of the dead, bringing into my personal situation the reality of his person with the, with the corresponding results of my brother's resurrection from the dead. And when they sat around the table in John chapter 12, they could have a special birthday party for Lazarus. And it says that they sat there. Look at 12.1. In the six days, when Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, they made him a supper. Martha served. Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. And Mary took a pound of spikenard. Great experience. Great story. I, 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 let, let's just finish with this one, one verse in Hebrews 10. Listen to it, please. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. A new and living way is verse 20. Through the veil, that is to say his flesh, having a high priest, verse 21. 22, let us draw near with a true heart, with a true heart, a heart of love, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. No evil conscience. Imagine. No evil conscience. Well, our bodies washed with pure water that metaphorically is speaking of the animal sacrifices in Leviticus. They washed the animal on the inside of the animal before they offered it. We are washed with the water of the word of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Verse 23. Let us consider one another. In verse 24. And provoke unto love and good works. We're saying, David, we, do you love us? We, uh, David is saying, let's go get the stuff. We're saying, David, okay, let's go. We'll go for it. We're with you. He provoked them unto love and good works. Uh, we provoke each other by this great connection that we have in a spiritual way. Where we sit together and weep together. I've been there at a table with a tragedy. Unexpected, sad, devastating. To sit there without anything to say but in our hearts care for each other. Weeping. Might endure for the go for the night, but joy comes in the morning. There has to be the God that edifies. There has to be the God that changes my life. There has to be love that casts out the fear. There has to be love that says we have hope. Raising a family is hard work, real hard work. Raising a family is tough. Hanging in there, having our jobs, driving our cars, doing our, our bills, and all the things, even getting up sometimes and get going. We need encouragement. The deepest kind, not the entertainment thing that is on the surface and that's okay, or not the friends that are only on the surface of things. That's okay, that's part of life. We, we are thankful for all that we have, and yet there is that sound that a Holy Spirit message, that doctrine that speaks to my heart, and it edifies me. And I say in my heart, yes, thank you, God, and be a worshiper of him. We need it because the default mode is the core of fear. But the faith operation, the walk of faith, the core is love. By default, I lapse into fears. Just leave me for a while, and that can happen. But as we go before God boldly, by faith, he will fill us. And love now governs, and it's deep in our spirit and in our heart. Okay. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Lord Jesus, there are people that we meet in the cafes that need a good word. 
there are people on the street, um, some overwhelmed and some distressed. And we are like David who, who encouraged himself in you. And we are learning to do it with each other. We are learning to do it with unbelievers out in the, out in the streets and amongst us, the unbelievers, learning how to minister to them, learning how to teach them the Bible, learning how to share our life with them, learning how to speak in wisdom, learning how to lead them in the faith, learning how to teach them to believe you and trust you, uh, we are learning how to minister to people that actually, in many ways, they, have, they just turn on the TV and just fears are everywhere. They just look at the world. And, um, and we are those that live without the fear. Hallelujah. We are prepared by our God who came here and said, I am the resurrection and the life. Believe in me. Follow me. Maybe someone here this morning has never accepted Christ, and now is the time for you. It is. Now is the day. Today is the day to say to Christ, I believe in you. Forgive me. Take my sin away. Come into my life. Save me. Forgive me, anoint me, show me your love. Take the fear away, Lord. Take it away at the cross. Teach me how to walk close to you and trust you. I want to experience you. I want to know you personally. I want you to be present for me in my bedroom in the morning. I want to see you before I go to bed at night. I want to see you at lunchtime. I want to know you, recognize you. I want to discern you. You said, blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. And I want to see God. I want a pure heart. I want a new heart. I want to be born again. And I'm believing in you this morning. Raise your hand, anyone giving, giving your Putting your trust in him, anyone raise your hand, please, anyone at all. Yes, to Jesus, anyone at all. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Great decision. You're in the family of God, God's family. Start to walk with him, talk to him, trust in him. He will answer you. Uh, he will help you. He will guide you. He will fill you. He will be your counselor. Christ is your high priest. God is your father. God is your friend. He is your good pastor. He is the good shepherd. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is your new freedom, a freedom from sin. And repent from your sin. Say, I, I'm going to trust God and not do that anymore. I'm going to trust God and believe God and walk with God. And I want to find God and know God. God is he is. I am that I am. He is. Thank you, Father, for this fellowship of edification and encouragement. In these days, we need it, and the world around us needs encouragement in the deepest way. David had it. Martha and Mary, they got it. Lazarus got it. Jesus is the encouragement, and everyone in this room has it. Walk in it in, by faith in his name. Amen. Turn into wine, 
Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power, our God our God Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you I was afraid that Mike wasn't. <laughs> Father, thank you today for a perfect love that draws us near. Fear, we run away. So thank you for drawing us near with perfect love that casts out fear. Thank you for the message. May it become not just knowledge, but through faith, wisdom, something very personal and practical in our lives that we would Hear those words from Jesus, fear not, fear not, fear not. Bring us back tonight, Lord Jesus, for an opportunity to hear more about God's love and 
just being drawn. We thank you. Bless our day today. Bless the service to come at 11 o'clock. That which is at 6.30 tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.